and welcome to the phonics meeting. My name is Miss Morrell and I am the phonics lead at Forest Primary School. Today this video will hopefully help you to understand your child's phonics journey throughout school and how you can help to support them at home. I did think about doing a Zoom meeting however I thought this would be so much easier for you all as you can access it at any time and re-watch it if you need to. I really do hope this helps and if you have any questions at all I'll put my email below and you can message me at any point. What is phonics? So words are made up from small units of sound called phonemes. So phonics teaches children to be able to listen carefully and identify the phonemes, which are the sounds, that make up each word. This helps them to learn to read and to spell words and it also helps children when it comes to writing too. Phase 1 phonics. So this is the early teaching of phonics and usually starts in preschool, nursery and the start of reception and it focuses on developing children's listening skills. So we start off doing a lot of oral work at quite a slow pace and it's training children in awareness of sounds. So the way that they are taught this is through environmental sounds, instrumental sounds, body percussion, clapping, stomping, lots of action songs, nursery rhymes and all this helps develop children's listening skills and that is phase one of phonics. Phase two phonics. So phase two phonics is where children begin to learn the sounds that the letters make. There are 44 sounds all in all, some made with two letters but in phase two they focus on those most common single letter sounds. So these are sounds like s, a, 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 t, 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 p, 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 i, 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 n. And you might see how I've done some actions as I was saying those sounds. So children will be learning actions for each of those sounds and they'll come home and they'll show you those actions and those are the links between the sounds and the letter and the letter formation. So the aim is for them to see a letter and identify the sound that goes with it and these are what those actions help us with. I will attach a sound mat here And these are your phase two sounds that your child will learn first. If you want to look up the songs and the actions, if you type in Jolly Phonics onto YouTube, all of the songs will come up and they have all the actions with them and you can start learning them as well at home. I will put a video of me doing all the actions at the end of this video. Um, however, I'm not gonna sing the songs. No one wants to hear me singing the songs, but if you do want to hear the songs, you can type them into YouTube and they will be there. At the end of the phase two, children should be able to read some vowel consonant words. So this is words like as, as, vowel consonant words, very short. And they should also be able to read some consonant vowel consonant words. So this is a word like d, o, g, dog and k, a cat. So very simple words, two and three letter words using your phase two sounds. They will also learn some tricky words alongside these but that is your phase two. During phase two children are learnt to blend. So this is where they can see those letter sounds. They might see a s and an a and a t. And it's where your child is able to identify those sounds. That is the phase two part. Blending is where they start merging those sounds together until they can hear the word that it says. So saying them quicker and faster and smoother so that they can hear the s -a -t. Actually, when they say it quicker, s -a -t, s -a -t, sat, they can hear that it says the word sat. So soon your children will be coming home with reading books. They may have already come home with a reading book with words in. Some of your children may not have words in them yet, um, but they will begin to come home with books with more and more words in where they will practice their blending. And this is identifying the sounds and merging them together 
blending them together until they can hear the word that it says. Segmenting is the opposite of blending. So blending is when they're reading words and they can identify those sounds and blend them together to hear that word. Segmenting is the other way around. This helps them when they are writing. So this is where children are able to say a word. So they can say the word sat, sat, and they can break it up into the individual phonemes. So they say the word and they think what sounds are in that word. I know there's a s, a, t, and it's the breaking up. So this is the skill in being able to write the words and spell the words. And it does help children when reading and make sure that they're not just memorising those words and they can break them up and blend them together. So segmenting and blending go together, they can segment those words into the single phonemes and they can also blend them together to hear that word. Phase three phonics. So phase three phonics introduces your child to those remaining sounds that they have not yet learned in phase two. These are more difficult to learn and they are less commonly used. However, they do need to learn them because they are in a lot of words. They are mainly made up of two letters and some of them do have three letters as well. For example, our phase two introduces an S making the S sound and it also introduces a H making the H sound. However, when these two sounds are together, they make the SH sound, like in the word SH, OO, SHOO and SH, IP, SHIP. So when they are together, they make a different sound altogether. There are a lot of these, and when they are together, they make a completely different sound. So your child will be beginning to learn those different sounds that they make when next to a friend, another letter friend. Here is a phase three sound mat to show you which sounds are in phase three. After having learnt these phase three sounds, children should then be able to identify them in words and notice when they're sat next to their friend, their letter friend, and they make a different sound. Children will then begin to write words with these in and then begin to build up their reading skills and be able to read harder words and write harder words using these sounds. Um, again, children will learn some new tricky words alongside these, but this is phase three. Phase four phonics. So phase four phonics is very similar to phase two. They are still those single sound letters. They are still phonemes. However, the only difference is we call them consonant blends. This is where you still have your s sound in a word you still have your t sound in a word. However, when these two are sat next to each other, they kind of blend into each other a little bit. And sometimes you may not hear that T. So you hear the s in stop, but sometimes a child may not hear the t in stop. So phase four is getting your child to recognize and identify when there is another sound in that word that you may not necessarily hear when they're sounding it out. I will put up a sound mat here and this is your phase four sound mat. So all of those consonant blends that are very often found next to each other where they do blend into each other a little bit, they do merge into each other a little bit and you may not hear that second sound. Phase five phonics. So phase five phonics is generally taught in year one. Your child may touch on it in reception. However, do not worry if not, because they will spend their whole year one learning phase five. And this is in preparation for the phonics screening, which I will talk to you a little bit about later. So phase five is all of those alternative spellings for the sounds that they've already learnt. And you do begin to realise how hard the English language is to learn because, wow, there's so many. 
Um, so thinking back to phase three, your child will learn the I sound for phase three. And this is the I, G, H, I sound in the word high. H, I, G, H, high, I, G, H, make the I sound. However, in phase five, they begin to learn that not all of the I sounds in words look like an I, G, H. And actually, it, they can look differently. So if you think about the word pie, if I was going to go and eat an apple pie, I wouldn't go and eat an apple P-I-G-H because that I sound is not in the word pie and actually it can look like an I and an E. I would eat an apple P-I-E, pie, P-I, pie. And it can also look like a split vowel digraph. So if I was going to go and ride my bike, I would not go and ride my b i g h k because that is not how we spell bike. But actually, our split vowel digraph i sound has a magic e on the end. So I am going to go and ride my b b i k e because my i and my e are holding hands, and my i makes the I sound and that is another phase five sound so like I said this is where it gets a bit confusing for them as it is a hard language to learn there are so many alternative spellings but here let me show you a um, phase five sound mat so you can have a look at all of the phase five sounds that they'll learn and just like phase two, three, four, they will also learn lots of tricky words to go with these. So phase five is a long phase and it does take a long time to learn, but like I said, this is more of a year one phase. Keywords. These are those words that you may have heard me keep referring back to as I was talking to you through the phases. These are those words that you cannot sound out using your phonics. These are those tricky words that you just have to know. We practice these, we have actions for them, you have little songs for them. There's Again, there's lots and lots of YouTube videos that you can go on to hear songs about these. But these are just those words that children need to identify as those words that you cannot use your phonics for. This may be words like so, S-O, so. So it's not spelt so, so, but it's spelt so. So it's just those words that they just need to remember that they can't use their phonics for and they are those tricky words that we just have to know. Examples of some tricky words up on your screen now. Phonics lessons in school. So these lessons are made up of all of the fun and engaging ways to draw the children into their learning and their reading and their writing. These are made up of activities, games, singing songs and these lessons for at least 20 minutes a day where they'll learn these new sounds and the tricky words and then they'll put them into practice by reading and writing words. They will do this right up until the end of year one. There is so much you can do at home to help promote and engage your child with the learning of phonics. You should have been given a phonics pack by your child's teacher by now and every week this will be updated with the new sounds that your child will have learnt at school. Every time they're introduced the sound will be popped in there and you can take that home, they can take that home and start going through them with you. You can use them as flashcards to show them, tell me what this sound is, tell me what that sound is. You can get them to build words with those sounds. You can build words for them, ask them to read them, all of those types of things with the phonics packs that you can do at home, reading books, making sure that you are reading three times a week. That is the same across the whole of the school and will really, really help with your child's understanding of phonics and being able to segment and blend and start to read and notice those sounds. If you haven't yet been given a book with words, 
do not worry there's so much more you can do even just when you go out for walks oh what is what sounds do you notice on that sign over there oh what do you think this says here what does it start with it starts with a p -p -p. what other words can you think of that begin with a p -p -p? even things can you go and get your b -ag? see if they can blend those sounds together and figure out what they need to go and get you you can make it as fun and creative as you like sounds and phonics are everywhere so just be creative with it and get them engaged in it and they will end up loving phonics and reading. Phonics screening. So phonics screening is a national statutory assessment that all year one pupils have to take part in at the end of year one. So by the time your child gets to the end of year one they will have to do this assessment. It is basically assessing your child's understanding of phonics and their phonic knowledge. So it is made up of 20 real words and 20 nonsense words. And the nonsense words are in there so that they can test your child's understanding of phonics. They are words that your child will not have seen before to ensure that they are not just reading from memory and that they can use phonics when reading and writing. There are 40 words all together and they will have to read them all and they will be tested against them all to ensure that they are using their phonic skills to read them correctly. Here is a list of websites and games which I would recommend. So if you ever want to do anything more phonics related at home, please do go and check these out because these are all really, really good, highly recommended websites and games. Your children will love them. And yeah, if you need anything more to do at home, please do use these as they're really good. I've also put my email address on the bottom so that if you have any questions at all about phonics, please, please email me. I will always reply. I don't care about how silly the question is. Just pop me an email and I will do my best to help you. And yeah, that is the end of our phonics meeting. But thank you so much for listening to me and I really do hope this has helped. And like I said, if you have any questions, please do just send me an email and I will answer them as best that I can.